This is the second lesson on ratios, or ratios part two, for the pre-algebra level of math. We're going to be talking about ratios today, a little bit about how to use them more practically. The first thing I'd like to point out is that you've seen ratios before, whether you recognize it or not. Ratios, for example, here's one. Speed is a ratio. Um, it's often called rate or velocity, but we're going to call it speed for now. It's a ratio of, for example, miles per hour, the distance you travel in a certain amount of time. We write this like this, miles per hour, or you can write it as a fraction, miles over the hours, or you can just say, in English words, you would say miles per hour. Anyway, that's a ratio. The next ratio we'll talk about is if you have a vehicle and you look down, you see RPM. That's rotations per minute. So that is another ratio. It's a ratio of how many times it rotates in each minute. The third ratio I'd like to talk about, um, I don't know, I was just thinking about different things and I thought of parts per million. When you eat food, like I was visiting a Hershey factory and one of the students there asked the question, how many parts per million are bug pieces? And <laughs> so they have a certain amount, you know, they have their quality testing and it has to be below a certain amount. Fortunately, they do measure it in parts per million, so it really isn't a lot of bug you're eating. You're not getting a great deal of protein with that. But I just wanted to point out that you do see these things, these, per, these ratios in everyday life. That would be a ratio of bug parts or foreign objects for the amount of food parts, All right, like this little worm inside the apple. It's just a little worm, right? The rest of the apple's good. All right, let's move on. <laughs> We're going to look at how to actually solve ratios now. And the first ratio example I have here is saying I eat 15 eggs in five minutes. What is the ratio of eggs per minute? The first thing I'm going to do is write this as a fraction. Um, I just Sometimes I write it as a fraction, sometimes I'll write it with the colon in between, and sometimes I'll write it in words. You can solve ratios either way, whichever way you want. I've just chosen to use fractions this time. So I write it with eggs and minutes. Then I'll substitute in the amounts I have. I know that I have 15 eggs and 5 minutes, so I can substitute that value right into this fraction. Now I have the fraction. I know I eat 15 eggs per 5 minutes. I want to reduce that to find out how many eggs I eat in 1 minute. So I'm going to divide each term by 5. So 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 5 divided by 5 is 1. So in other words, I will eat 3 eggs per minute. I can write that in, um, in a sentence. If I'm eating 3 eggs per minute, they'd better be the chocolate Easter bunny kind, because there's no way <laughs> I'm going to be eating 3 fried eggs every minute, especially 15 eggs. Whoa. Anyway, so there is how I would set up this type of question. Let's look at some more examples. Here it says, the ratio in lowest terms of me driving 100 miles in four hours. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'll set up my ratio of miles to hours. Right? Miles, how many miles for each hour? And I'll just fill in the blanks. You'll notice I'm using the colons this time instead of the fraction. You can use solve ratios whichever way you feel comfortable. I have 100 miles in four hours. I'm going to try and reduce that down to lowest terms, and I'll do that by dividing. Oops, I just drew a black line underneath the 100. You can't even see it. I'll divide by the greatest common factor. In this case, that's four. I'll divide each term by four, and that gives me the final ratio of 25 to 1. In other words, I drive 25 miles per hour. All right, maybe I'm going through like a, I don't know, a school zone for four hours. I don't know. I don't know why I would drive 25 miles an hour for four straight hours, maybe traffic. Anyway, point is that I've reduced my ratio down the lowest terms, and now I'm driving 25 miles in one hour, 25 per one, 25 miles per hour. If I can fit 12 people in three cars, how many people are there 
per car. So I'm setting up a ratio here of people to cars. And this time I'm going to solve it using the written way. People to cars, I have 12 to 3. There's 12 people in 3 cars. And I'm trying to find how many people per car. So again, I'm going to be reducing this down to its lowest terms. And to do that, I will divide each side here by 3, the greatest common factor. And this gives me the final answer that I am going to fit 12 divided by 3, 4, oops, I wrote that again in a color that does not show up on a black background, um, of 4 to 1. For, again, we can take a look right here, for people to one car. So I can write that, my final answer, I fit four people in per car on average. Right? Maybe there's five people in one car and only three in another or something. But if there's 12 people in three cars, there's an average of four people per car. All right, we don't have any monkey or monkey clown cars fitting all 12 people in them or anything. This is just pretty simple, straightforward. Four people, one car. Sounds good. Let's look at another ratio question. If there are 32 slices of pizza, or 32 slices of pizza, there are four total pizzas. Let's write slices pizza. I'm going to do this one in a fraction. I really do like how the fractions work, um, just because reducing fractions to its lowest terms is something that all of us have done. So it's something that's a little bit more familiar. So if I'm going to write out my fraction, I write it slices and pizzas. I have 32 slices for four pizzas. I'll find my common factor between the two. And that is 4. So I divide each, the top and the bottom, by 4. And I'll find that I have 32 divided by 4 is 8. And 4 divided by 4 is 1. Just giving you time in case you're working along here with me. And I do tend to talk really fast. so. We know that we have eight slices for each pizza. Makes sense. So we'll write that down. We have eight slices per pizza. All right. We know we have four pizzas, eight slices per pizza. Four times eight is 32. So we can check our work kind of backwards like that if we want to. The last question that we're going to be working, we're going to talk about Jim. I like Jim. He's a nice guy. Jim types 480 words in eight minutes. How many words per minute does Jim type? So let's, I guess we could do, hmm, we'll use the colon on this one. We'll put it in words to minutes, written out like this, and then we'll fill in the blank. How many words does he type? He types 480 words in 8 minutes. That's a ratio of 480 to 8. And we're going to reduce that down to lowest terms by dividing each term by 8. All right. And a quick way to do 480 divided by 8 is just to look at it and say, well, what's 48 divided by 8? Just a quick trick, 480, 48 divided by 8 is 6, and the zeros stay the same. 8 divided by 8 is 1. So Jim is a pretty decent typist. Jim types 60 words per, whoop, words per words. No, no, no. Words per minute. They're much better. Jim types 60 words per minute, WPM. 
So that's some of the common ways that we do see ratios in our everyday lives. And essentially, we're doing a lot of the same things that we've done before, reducing fractions to lowest terms, looking for greatest common denominators. I think the key point to this is that we make sure when we're setting it up that we do word that we leave items the same way that they are. So if it's words here, you remain words, and this is words. So this is words straight down, and this is minutes straight down. No matter which way you're writing them, just be consistent, and you should be able to get through to the end of those. I hope this has been a helpful lesson about ratios. Have a wonderful day.